I don't normally do this, but this video lesson is dedicated to my late parents who may have gone so soon, but whose love will forever live within my heart. That being said, let's now talk about attachments and the importance of early emotional bonds. So a child's attachment to a significant caregiver is the single most influential event in the development of his personality. It's the source of a child's sense of security, self-esteem, and self-control. But the impact of a first attachment goes far beyond emotions. It shapes how well he remembers and learns and how he gets along with others. A secure attachment, as with its weakness or absence, wires a child's brain in a set, of pa in a set pattern. How can one aspect of early childhood so much uh, hold so much power for the span of a lifetime? And how do child psychologists know what they know about attachment? We answer both of these questions in this video. So let's start with this person, John Bowlby. So he did his naturalistic observation of children more than half a century ago, but subsequent research has only fortified uh, adherence to his perspective among psychologists. Bowlby was a British physician and a trained psychoanalyst who accepted Freud's central tenet of the importance of a person's early childhood experiences, well, uh, in, in, in the, the formation of uh, his personality. To Freudianism, Bowlby added a detailed analysis of the specific interaction that create a secure versus insecure early attachment between a mother and her child. And he drew on ethology to make evolution the organizing principle to account for how these interactions spring from uh, the survival instinct, instincts of both parent and child. How can anyone resist such faces, right? A baby smile and cupie pie cheeks are indeed irresistible to most adults. Bowlby pointed out how this visual charm operates as a brilliant adaptation not unlike puppies, kittens, or birds, nearly guaranteeing essential affection, comfort, and food will come a baby's way. Meanwhile, a mother's innate drive to succor and protect her newborn are usually enough to make her play her part in this highly reciprocal relationship. In what Bowlby called the human attachment system, babies have a large repertoire of highly effective signals to ensure they receive what they need to survive and thrive. When they're not smiling, they cry and fuss, or they coo and grab at their mother's hair, face, uh, and breasts. They also track her every move around the house just like a duckling follows its mother uh, through, through tall grass. Now, babies are sociable by the age of three or, or the age of three months, but they usually save their biggest smiles for the significant caregiver in their lives. Adults mirror these smiles right back. By calling these behaviors adaptive, Bowlby made the point that they are inborn. The baby's purpose, he said, is to stay physically close to the most important source of his independent survival. Bowlby noted that newly hatched geese and ducklings develop a preference for the first moving object they see, a process called imprinting. Similar to these birds, human newborns prefer moving objects and often recognizes their mothers within days of birth. However, full bonding on the part of a human baby takes much longer than other animal species, at least six months longer than a duckling. Fortunately, human parents usually pick up any slacks in the bonding process. After only a few minutes with a newborn, mothers and fathers typically say they're gunners, already in love. Sound uh, pretty adaptive, right? But here is the thing. Neuroscientists say 
uh, babies take longer than their parents to fully bond because their limbic systems and their and the uh, frontal cortex of a baby's brain which processes emotions take from six to nine months to develop the capacity for bonding in a baby's six or seventh month she has reached prime time to solidify her attachments with the primary adult usually mother in other in another bow to ethology bolby noticed that this timing coincides with the start of a baby's crawling this suggested to him a link between independent locomotion and the completion of a baby's process of attachment which began at birth of course it takes a baby a lot longer to climb out of his crib than it does for a chick to hop out of its nest because chicks and toddlers go wandering too far away instincts make sure that they know where home base can be found safety and explorations are two competing goals in a baby's earliest years a child who stays safe uh, survives a child who explores develop the intelligence and then skills needed to successfully grow they uh, these two needs often oppose each other this is why Bowlby and his successors believe that a child develops an internal thermostat to monitor his level of safety in the environment when he gets too far from home base an internal alarm bell sounds it's a familiar dynamic where a child ventures away from mother either by crawling or or toddling until some impulse prompts him to turn back around and check to see whether mother is still close by if she's still uh, if she's still where he left her he makes uh, he may keep going or uh, he may come back to touch base before restarting his explorations the attachment bonding process permits children to regulate their urges to explore or to cling to that special adult by internalizing what Bowlby called working models of their caregivers one such working model in the previous situation is it's okay mom uh, it's okay mom will be there if he if i crawl farther another might be i can't go too far she may leave me it's too scary babies form one or another model based on their mother's behaviors over time striking images of some very unhappy even self-destructive monkeys convinced many doubters about the importance of early animal and human mother-child bonding in the 1950s these photos come from harry harlow's uh, famous series of rhesus monkey experiments harlow separated a group of infant monkeys from their mothers and raised them with two types of substitute mother figures one was made of bare wire the other had a soft cloth cover over a wire uh, form harlow uh, harlow's research questions were would infant monkeys form attachment to their inanimate mother substitutes would they receive any observable emotional comfort from either kind of substitute mother now the the infant monkeys did form an attachment but only with the cloth covered wire mother uh, mother surrogate not the uncovered wire, uh, wire form interestingly both types of surrogates provided food by way of a bottle attached to the wires now this uh, told researchers that the bonding they observed between the infant monkey and the cloth covered surrogate was not solely based on nourishment something else was behind the bonding now the baby monkeys in harlow's experiments habitually clung to the cloth covered wired mothers in a manner strikingly similar to how they would hold on to a real mother uh, monkey mother the experiment provided a convincing demonstration that the critical ingredient in attachment formation is not food but contact comfort 
because they were gentle to touch, these softer surrogates were the next best thing to a mother monkey. Harlow's results uh, alter the psychoanalytic view of how the mother-child bond is formed, making skin-to-skin -skin physical contact as important as the oral gratification received by newborn babies while being nursed or bottle-fed by their mothers. Harlow's studies also went against the position of the behavioral theorists who's, uh, who emphasized food itself as the primary reinforcer of a baby's behavior. Other insights gleaned from uh, these experiments concern the long-term negative impact on the monkey's emotional and physical health as a result of this deprivation. To compensate for a missing mother, these monkeys would suck obsessively on their own bodies. They remained huddled in corners, rocking themselves with distant looks in their eyes. Later, they, uh, when placed with other monkeys, they become hostile, aggressive, and rarely mated. Later experiments with other mon monkeys help clarify the importance of timing for human mother-baby attachment patterns. Monkeys who spent at least three months with their mothers before being separated showed less severe uh, behavioral abnormalities than, tho than those separated from birth. Monkeys separated from their mothers at the age of six months showed no long-term negative behaviors. Researchers conclude that there is a sensitive or critical period for bonding between monkey mothers and infants which lasts for about six months. In humans, the critical period is believed to at least three years, with any deprivation suffered in this first three years of life considered the most harmful. Harlow's Rhesus monkey experiments strongly inferred that serious negative consequences occur when a human baby is deprived of a strong bond with a mother figure in the first year of life. Bowlby then confirmed this hypothesis with his observations of children in post-World War II orphanages. Even with mother and child instincts and parental awe to move things along, attachment is not an in instantaneous process that begins and ends in the delivery room. It's more like a dance bet uh, which begins before birth and continues throughout a baby's first year. Although the mother usually is the primary object of a baby's attachment, the likelihood is equally strong that whoever provides consistent and affectionate care of a baby, whether father, grandparent, or an adoptive parent, can, can form the same secure attachment with that baby. Factors that increase a secure attachment include a single primary uh, regular caregiver for the baby's first six months rather than a series of irregular caregivers, synchronized routines for eating, sleeping, and stimulation with that caregiver, especially during a baby's first few months. Consistent smiling, touching, and affection by that primary caregiver is also an important factor. Lastly, acting consistently in response to the baby's distress with comfort, warmth, and competency is the final requirement uh, uh, in order to increase secure attachment. A caregiver's sensitivity to a baby's distress is important, but too much of a good thing is counterproductive too. Research show that when super attentive mothers responded instantly to their baby's every gurgle, uh, cry, and hiccup, their children became less secured attached. Uh, the lesson here is that children react poorly to smothering. It hampers their independence and inhibits the process of learning to self-soothe. 
Another perspective on attachment is revealed by the biochemistry behind parent-baby bonding, drives, and behaviors. Using brain scans and tests of hormone levels and heart rates, researchers can now see the biochemical result when a secure attachment is made and when it fails, it fails to take place. A woman's hormones prepare her for giving birth and, the, and then ready her for feeding and nurturing a newborn baby. During pregnancy, her, ba her brain circuits are literally, literally rewired and her sense attuned to the extra physical and emotional demands of caring for her newborn. As a result of her uh, evolutionary instincts that manifest in this intense chemical preparation for childbirth, she will focus nearly all her attention and energy on this tiny person until its survival is assured. For humans and throughout uh, the animal kingdom, the hormone oxytocin is the fundamental or rather is fundamental to the first mother-child bonding that occurs after a baby is born. Much of what is known about the role of this hormone in creating the and maintaining human bonds came from um, animal researches or animal experiments. Female rats and sheep uh, give, uh, given injections of oxytocin will even take care of young rats and young lam lambs uh, they've never seen before. In human labor and childbirth, a mother's uterine uh, contractions trigger the brain to release a flood of oxytocin and the neurotransmitter dopamine. The pain suppressing effect of these hormones are essential after a woman has experienced anywhere from 6 to 36 hours of labor. When the baby is born, they create a residue of euphoria as a chemical uh, as chemicals flooding peak in the first minute following birth, often coinciding with the first time the newborn is put to the mother's breast for suckling. During the last month of pregnancy, a mother-to-be starts producing the hormones that prepares her for nurturing and lactation, that is prolactin. This hormone, this hormone causes milk to be secreted from her breasts. Oxytocin assists by enabling the milk letdown response in a woman's breast and sensitizing the new mother to her infant's touch. In fact, the baby's touching of his mother's breast with his hand or lips causes oxytocin to be released. During nursing, oxytocin surges, bringing pleasure and relaxation to the mother and deepening the mother-baby bond. The latest studies have shown that when a man becomes a father, his brain uh, goes through changes too. Soon after hearing the news that he's about to be a father, a, ma a man starts to produce cortisol, a stress hormone. Now, uh, cortisol level tends to spike around four to six weeks after a man hears the big news and then they decrease as the pregnancy progresses. Then about three weeks before the baby arrives, his testosterone levels fall about 30%, making him much more cooperative, less competitive, and more likely to show his softer side. For men, the hormone vasopressin play a key role in preparing for a baby's birth, helping them make the emotional connections required by new fatherhood. Also, during the last few weeks of his mate's uh, uh, pregnancy, a man's prolactin level rises by 20%. It's not clear what effect prolactin has in a man, but it's thought to have an indirect impact on his falling testosterone levels. After his child's, child's birth, his estrogen level, a nurturing uh, influence which is normally low uh, or very low uh, in, in men increases. The point of these changes appear to be to make fathers more maternal in their behaviors, at least more than their normal high levels of testosterone will allow. 
about six uh, weeks after birth, a man's hormone level begins to return to, norm to normal. Higher estrogen levels along with lots of skin contact with his baby triggers the release of oxytocin in a man. All these chemicals uh, or all this chemistry helps reinforce a father's newfound cuddling and cooing behaviors. At the same time, fathers interact with babies and toddlers in different ways than mothers. A father is more likely to jiggle or rock babies in a playful, rhythmic fashion, while women use firm or light touching to soothe and contain them. As children grow older, a father uh, tend to make a more rough and tumble approach to their physical care and to be more challenging and less sympathetic than a mother. Research show that both approaches are good and necessary for developing children. When the primary attachment is made between mother and baby in her baby's first six months, Research has shown that they both typically begin to form much closer relationships with fathers and siblings uh, soon uh, thereafter. Like her mother, when a baby receives affection and loving attention, she enjoys the calming effects of oxytocin. A lack of nurturing touch early in her life can create a negative neuro neurochemical pattern in her brain based on those early disappointments. With negative expectations brought to future attachment, this child may react to the increase of oxytocin caused by physical or emotional intimacy with fear, not with anticipation of pleasure. Instead of a warm and fuzzy feeling activated by oxytocin, stress chemicals are triggered. Cortisol, the chemical that keeps us alert and helps us deal with stress, seems to be the main culprit at work here. Sometimes, cortisol is necessary. For example, in the morning when uh, its concentration is highest to help us uh, wake up. But cortisol dampening effect on oxytocin is a less po a positive thing when you wish to be calm and open to human connections. Either of these lifelong positive and negative biochemical patterns begin in baby's first years. In the 1970s, a, psycho a psychologist Mary Ainsworth built on Bowlby's theory of attachment by creating a now famous series of controlled laboratory experiments with mothers and babies called the Strange Situation Experiment. The goal of these experiments was to figure out the detailed patterns and styles of behaviors that cause either a secure or insecure parent-child bond. Uh, two concepts are central to these experiments. You have stranger anxiety, which is the wariness of or, or fear of unfamiliar adults shown by most infants between ages of 6 and 24 months and you also have separation anxiety which is the distress that infants between 6 and 24 months experience when separated from their primary caregivers. Normally, anxiety is not viewed as a positive experience but in the case of children younger than 3, fear towards strangers and separation from a mother are healthy and appropriate responses. In fact, they provide evidence of a child's positive, secure relationship with a mother or other primary caregiver. To closely observe attachment behaviors between mothers and babies in a more controlled setting, Ainsworth scripted eight episodes to test mothers' and babies' response to certain stresses. The dual focus throughout is on the baby's response to the mother's absence and the presence of a stranger and on the mother's response to her baby. Ainsworth now famous and commonly used strange situation experiment involves one-year-old babies and mothers from a variety of background and ages. 
So, uh, there are eight stages in Ainsworth's strange situation procedure. After each stage listed next, uh, the behavior of a securely attached baby is noted. Stages 2 through 8 uh, last about 3 minutes each. So the first stage is introduction. An assistant where an assistant introduces mother and baby to the room while mother holds her baby for about 30 seconds. So a calm baby is, uh, is, is held by mother. Uh, so, uh, the second stage is the unfamiliar room. Baby is on the floor with toys available to play with. Mother sits nearby. Uh, uh, baby may be wary of the new room but uses mother as base of security, maintaining eye contact with her uh, while playing with toys. Now, the third st uh, uh, stage is stranger enters. An unfamiliar female knocks, enters the room, speak with mother, and then goes to play with baby. Mother may show stranger anxiety and uh, clearly prefers, or baby may show stranger anxiety and clearly prefers mother to playing with stranger while mother is present. Uh, or rather, while mother is present, baby may allow stranger to approach and play nearby. So the fourth stage is when mother leaves quietly, leaving baby with stranger who goes and sit in mother's chair. Baby shows separation anxiety and renewed stranger anxiety. She may accept some comfort from the stranger but clearly wants mother back. So, uh, the fifth stage is when reun uh, is reunion with mother and baby, where stranger exits. Mother comforts baby, and if baby wants to continue playing with toys, does so. So, baby seeks uh, contact and comfort from mother. Baby clings to mother, and baby may continue to play after receiving comfort. Now, the sixth stage is when mother leaves again, saying bye-bye on her way out, leaving baby alone. Baby shows renewed separation and uh, separation anxiety and distress. The, the, the seventh stage is when a stranger enters again, joining baby who is still alone, sits in mother's chair, then calls or goes to baby. Baby may show more anxiety towards the stranger and clearly prefers that mother returns. And lastly, for the eighth stage, reunion of mother and baby with mother picking up baby and stranger leaving the room. There's a joy for baby upon reuniting with mother and baby may want to hang on to mother. Ainsworth found that secure attachment uh, relationships tend to be associated with mothers who hold their babies frequently and with mothers who hold their children long enough so that they appear satisfied when they're put back down. Securely attached babies are aware of their mother's whereabouts and confident that she will return after leaving the room. If they are distressed, securely attached babies usually obtain quick comforts or quick comfort after being held by their mother. Other qualities of a secure mother-baby attachments include the mother is <clears throat> sensitive to calls and signals of distress from the baby and responds quickly. The mother goes along with the interaction and games that are initiated by baby and uh, the mother uh, adjusts the baby's feeding and sleeping schedules according to the baby's rhythms um, and uh, the relationship is mutual not dominated by the needs and moods of the mother and so based on her observations Ainsworth concluded that indifferent parenting led to insecure attachments between mothers and babies. Other researchers have subsequently added data from observational studies to show that ob uh, obtrusive and overstimulating parent styles can also lead to insecurely attached babies. 
mothers of insecurely attached babies were found to frequently be anxious and irritable. The most extreme of these mothers show little interest in their children, handling them a mechanical fa uh, in a mechanical fa uh, fashion and behaving otherwise resentful towards the babies. From thousands of controlled observations of mothers and children, Ainsworth formalized a system of rating attachment using four categories. You have a secure attachment, which accounts for 65% of all mothers and uh, children pair, where mothers use as a, where mothers are used as home base, uh, prefer her to strangers, and uh, uh, babies may show distress after uh, her leaving, and six physical contact when reunited with mother. And then you have insecure avoidant uh, attachment type, which accounts for about 20% of all babies. And in, in this uh, uh, attachment type, a uh, baby does not prefer mother to stranger and avoids contact with mother when reunited. And then you have the insecure resistant uh, attachment style, which accounts for about 10% of all babies, uh, of all babies, uh, um, studied by Ainsworth in her research. So in this uh, attachment style, babies show more ambivalence towards mother and six contact, then resist it, uh, doesn't avoid contact with mother and uh, show some anger and some, uh, or rather some are, uh, show, some show anger and sh some are passive. And then you have uh, the insecure disorganized type which accounts for about 5% of all babies in the Ainsworth, uh, Ainsworth studies. So uh, babies act confused and dazed, uh, may be calm, then angry, often will uh, remain motionless, shows apprehension, sometimes is in resistant or avoidance. Now, whether avoidant or resistant, insecurely attached babies learn that their caregivers will not respond sensitively to their needs. As a result, in time of uh, in times of stress, they may reject their mother's attempt to comfort them by looking away or showing anger and frustration. Babies who exhibit insecure, disorganized attachment sometimes have parents who are neglectful or ab uh, abusive. Often, researchers found that these parents had unresolved difficulties with their own parents and may have been abused as children themselves. Uh, themselves. Their pregnancies were often unplanned and unwanted. In less severe cases, disoriented, insecure behavior can occur when a mother displays anxiety or sends mixed signals to her baby. So, <clears throat> the most uh, oft-cited obstacle when uh, developing a secure attachment are the quality of the mother's ca uh, caregiving and the compatibility of the baby's temperament with the mother's temperament. So, uh, in this section of the video, we talk about the two main obstacles to attachment. And that is number one, maternal depression. Now, depressed mothers often miss and ignore a baby's signal of distress. They also have a harder time entering into a synchronous relationship with their child. With depressed mothers, babies first uh, become angry at their mother's lack of attention and their responsiveness, perhaps crying harder and for longer periods. But over time, these babies begin to match the mother's depressive symptoms. As mentioned earlier, by the age of six, uh, six months, babies internalize a specific working model of their mothers as either responsive or non-responsive, and their brains are required to reflect these experiences. It is estimated that 13% of pregnant women and new mothers develop <clears throat> situational depression as a result of new motherhood. 
any existing low-level depression or susceptibility to it can be aggravated by the hormonal shifts, added stress, and sleeplessness that accompany having a baby. Postpartum depression is an insufficiently <clears throat> recognized fact that can inhibit the development of a secure attachment in a baby's first six months. However, in a pioneering study at Columbia University, a psychiatric epidemiologist uh, or rather psychiatric epidemiologist Mir uh, Mirna Wiseman showed that when mothers of grade school children were successfully treated for depression, the depressive symptoms in a significant percentage of the children also dramatically improved. The study's key finding is that depressed children's improvement came without direct treatment of the children. Another obstacle uh, to uh, the development of, of attachment is what is called mismatched uh, temperaments. It takes two people, an adult and a baby, to form secure attachments. Stella Chess described these uh, three, uh, or rather described three different expressions of temperament. You have easy, slow to warm up, and difficult. A friendly, easy baby who is more likely to approach than withdraw from novelty in her environment has been found to have an easier uh, time becoming securely attached. Slow to warm up babies require uh, more inducement to draw into a relationship. A difficult baby, on the other hand, requires more time. Some recent research has, le uh, has lent a more integrative approach to the question of which factor is most likely to inhibit attachment, the quality of a mother or the primary figure's caregiver or the baby's possible difficult temperament. The major finding was that the quality of a caregiver, uh, of a caregiving or of caregiving a baby receives is most predictive of whether the child forms a secure or avoidant attachment as measured in strange uh, situation tests. However, the baby's temperament appears to be, a decis to be decisive in determining which type of in, uh, insecure attachment is formed. Temperamentally fearful children tend to form insecure resistant attachment where they kept their distance from their mothers but protested strongly. More outgoing babies with unresponsive mothers formed insecure avoidant attachments where they protest less but when uh, but were content to ignore their mothers in favor of a stranger a good question that we should be entertaining at this point is that is early attachment destiny the existing research show that babies who form secure primary attachment to their mothers in the first year turn out better, meaning they display more favorable development, uh, development outcomes later in childhood. Here's a sampling of that research. Securely attached uh, children at age 12 to 18 months when measured at 2 years old uh, uh, were found to be better problem solvers, be more complex and creative in their symbolic play, display more positive and fewer negative emotions, and be more uh, popular with their playmates. Each of these findings was made in a controlled setting comparing two years old or two year olds who had the benefit of secure attachment to those found to be insecurely attached to their primary caregivers. Longer term studies painted a similar picture. Children who were securely attached to their caregivers at 15 months of age were re-examined in follow-up studies at age 12 and uh, 11 to 12 and ages 15 to 16 among and among the findings were the following. Those who were uh, those who had been securely attached as toddlers were described as the uh, uh, at uh, the older ages as socially more popular, more curious, and self-directed. And those insecurely attached at 15 months were socially and emotionally withdrawn and less interested in learning. They also tend to be uh, 
to be unenthused about uh, surmounting challenges. These studies showed that these types of secure, uh, or rather the types of, of secure or insecure attachment that exist between parent and child in the first few years tend to be uh, the same in the child's grade school and high school years. Other researches have shown that a secure relationship with another person, father, grandparent, adoptive parent, or daycare provider can sometimes or can somewhat offset the negative consequences of a poor attachment with the mother. One reason why John Bowlby used the term working model to describe how young children internalize their earliest relationship was to emphasize that a child's working model could change. They could improve or deterior deteriorate as a result of a later relationship with teachers, romantic partners, or close friends. But even with these caveats, don't fall or, or don't fail to understand uh, the importance of a baby's beginning life with a secure bond to a significant adult. Lastly, uh, it's important that we talk about attachment and working mothers. My mother, as seen in this picture, was a career woman. She had to, considering my father died so early. So a constant question people have about my family is that is the quality of relationship we as kids had with her. So although many people would like to hear a definitive statement about the positive or negative effects of working mothers on young children, there are few absolute or simple answers to these questions. However, there are uh, or there is evidence for parents to consider when making individual decisions for, um, when making individual decisions. From the research, it, it was found that separation from working mothers generally do, do not prevent babies from establishing a secure primary attachment. This is true if the mother and father are sensitive and responsive caregivers when they are home with their child. Babies younger than six months placed in full-time daycare fares uh, an elevated risk of forming an insecure attachment and in one study they had lower scores on school readiness at 36 months however time spent in daycare added the risk of uh, a child's forming insecure attachment only when it was combined with mothering that was less sensitive and less responsive a mother's attitude towards working outside uh, the home is extremely important in shaping the attachment she forms with her child. Any sort of resentment negatively affects the mother-child bond. So if there's any ideal scenario to be uh, garnered from these existing data is this, a mother with a positive attitude who spends the first six to seven months as full-time or as a full-time stay-at-home mother stands the best chance of forming a secure attachment with her baby. So, in this lesson, we've talked about attachment and learned that attachment between babies and a significant adult is an instinctual process with lifelong implications. Within a secure attachment, a baby finds safety uh, and uh, the will to explore the world, developing an internal thermostat to keep both in balance. Babies and mothers in strange situations Research studies have, uh, or rather, are rated on four different styles of attachment that range from a secure attachment to avoidant, resistant, or disorganized insecure attachments. And babies younger than six months in full-time daycare are at a higher risk for developing an insecure attachment compared to babies with full-time mothers. So this ends our lesson on attachment. Again, my name is Dex Kamitan and thank you for watching.